The first thing we have to do is load our image into Inkscape. And this first section of the video, um, that's what will be happening. Start by opening Inkscape, um, and we'll only be using the trace option when we do. Uh, this is used to get around the missing trace function in Affinity. It's not an Inkscape tutorial. Well, not yet anyway. So once loaded, we have some example images I'm showing you here, and these will come up through the tutorial. Well, at least one of them will. Um, the bodybuilder in the bottom right hand side. Now that we have Inkscape open, we can drag our image into Inkscape. Now there's a little bit of lag in, it, in Inkscape and we import it because it's a JPEG file I'm dragging in and it'll need to import it. And there's the image. It's an image of a bodybuilder. We're just centering it, positioning it, move the image into position as I say there. Um, it, it, it's a bit of a fiddle because there's a bit of a lag there so it takes a little bit of getting in position because I fiddled around with it to start with. But once it's in position it's okay to go. Now we're not quite in position yet, I'm still fiddling around there. There we go, that looks like it might be where I want it to be. Now the next thing to do is to go over to the image, select path and select the um, trace bitmap option and you'll see a text box come up. Now I'm ignoring that for the moment because I've moved to the right hand panel and I'm going to drag open, if I can get hold of it, drag open the layers panel because it defaults to a fairly closed position. There we go, now I'm highlighting the various images that are in there, turning the little eyelash on and off and you can see what we've got there. Now I'm on the image itself. Now we go up to the trace bitmap option and you'll see there's a drop down, oops when I get hold of it, drop down menu comes up and in that drop down menu there is the option to auto trace and that's the one I've selected. Select Auto Trace, select Update, and it puts the image in there. You can see the image, and then click on OK. Now, I'm not too sure how long this takes, but given there's a bit of lag um, in Inkscape, it takes a moment or two. And once it's done, I go and click OK, just to make sure. And everything goes away, and I can close that down. Now we're left with a smaller image in there. It's reduced in size, but it's what we want. And you can see if you look in the right hand panel, there's another layer there. Now if you observe that layer, what we're going to do, we've got it highlighted, we're going to export, save as, sorry, save that layer as. It defaults, defaults to SVG. So We've got a name there, I'll give it a name, Bodybuilder, and it'll be bodybuilder.svg. And I'm just going to save that to downloads for the time being. And that's it. For that section, all done. Now we're opening Designer, and with Designer open, we now load in um, the SVG file, open it from... Go find it in Downloads, in my case. Your option may be different. Locate the SVG, load it into Affinity. Da -de da getting there. And there we go. There it is in Affinity. If you have a look at the right-hand side, there's almost exactly the same thing as we saw in Inkscape, and it's that middle layer that we want. That's the one with our curves on it, because you can turn that one off and turn that one on, and you can see it's a transparent background with just that curved layer there. Now, what I've got is no fill layer and no stroke uh, color. I turned them off. Okay, now I've gone to black, and I've set the stroke to black, and changing the width of the stroke so I can see the thing, 
to I think it's about 0.4 of a point, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 points. Now there's a mouthful. However, you can now see the outline, the transparent outline, um, on the workspace. And that's because that's highlighted. Now if I go down here and duplicate it, we've got two of them there, you can see. On and off, on and off, yes, very good, because they're right on top of each other. So with the one I've got selected, go up to Fill, change it from Transparent to Blue. So now I've got a blue bodybuilder, a transparent bodybuilder, and I can move them around at will. Let's call him Will. <laughs> move that one up there a little bit. And the blue bodybuilder. I'm just showing you now what you can do once you're in Affinity Designer and you've got your traced image. You have then, of course, the choice of doing whatever you like to those images. Now, I, am, I haven't shown you here, but that outline image, if you because that's a curve, if you were to select the node tool and click on that, you'd have all of the nodes available to you. And you can, of course, change it, move it, bend it, shape it, whatever you like. Now note the original image, which I've just put back in there, has a white background. And you can see that clearly on the transparent outline one. The white background has covered half of the body of the other ones. And it's, well, it's behind those ones. But the background one, because it's transparent all the way through. And I've just turned it off again. There we go. Black with white background. And... I'll turn that off in a moment. I'm just you can see the the mouse point is going around there, showing you where um, the white white background is. So I've turned that one off. And all you've got to do now is save it to well, I've got that one, all four of them. Well, there's four of them in the panel. I've just reduced it in size. And there we go.